So we're going to talk a little bit about rings today. What I think is really interesting about rings is we tend to take them for granted as uh, members of this present society. Anyone can go out and buy a ring. Um, they don't have a lot of like, I don't know, meaning or importance right now. Like you could just go buy a ring at Forever 21 for like $3. And we kind of forget that they used to have a very important historical significance in different cultures. So we'll start off a little bit by talking about um, where the practice of like wearing a ring started. And the earliest known records of rings is in ancient Egypt. Not a huge surprise if you're familiar with any of Egyptian history, but they really created a lot of things that we use today in humanity. So ancient Egyptians used what was called a seal ring. Um, and there were these rings that had little engravings on them and Egyptians actually used them to authenticate documents. So they used them almost, I think in lieu of like a signature. Um, it would be kind of how you like gave your stamp of approval on a document, um, which I think is so interesting. Like, man, Egyptians, fascinating. Um, then if we think about another ancient civilization, we can think about the Romans. Now, early on in the Roman Republic, um, apparently rings were used to symbolize social status. So certain members of uh, different social classes would have different types of metal rings. Like I think only like fancy people got to have gold rings, um, which you know is not unlike current times. I feel like we can look at like rappers and see uh, that they use rings to really signify their wealth and social status. They get really iced out with bling. Um, so that's been around as a concept for quite a while. And apparently in the third century of the Roman Empire, most anyone was allowed to wear a ring. It was no longer just like fancy people. Um, everyone could wear rings with the exception of enslaved people. They were not allowed to wear rings. Rude. <laughs> and then the Romans um, actually developed the practice of engagement rings, which I feel like uh, is something that is still incredibly popular today um, when two people are planning to get married, often um, they will present one another with engagement rings. Um, so that's a practice that started way, way, way long ago and is still in popular usage today. So thinking a little bit more about rings, um, in this class, if we were in person or if we happen to find ourselves in person later on in the spring, there's kind of like two ways that we make rings, um, two practices, if you will. We can make a soldered ring, which uses a flame from a torch uh, to actually like melt and fuse metal together. So it becomes one continuous piece. That's really fun. People get a little bit scared, uh, but it's a good time. And then the other method we'll use while we're at home is going to be wire wrapping. So the main goal when we're making a ring is it has to be functional which means you have to be able to wear it, um, or someone has to be able to wear it. And it also has to have form. So form uh, means it has to be like, like it looks cool. <laughs> so you wanna consider the form and the function of a ring. Your rings are gonna look a variety of different ways because you all have different styles and interests, um, but we're gonna all have the same function. You know, we all wanna have rings that are round, wearable, and not going to poke or stab you because they're sharp. <laughs> so in that sense, I'm gonna show you um, kind of some of the key things that we're looking for in terms of the function. I'll show you an example uh, of a ring that I think has um, decent function. And this is an example that I made. So if you're looking at this example, I think I'll put it maybe here. <laughs> you can see that it has wire wrapping on each side of the bead. Um, that is so the loose ends of the wire are not just like sticking out. Sometimes I see rings where the artist will let the rings like wire uh, tail end stick out. And the problem with that is we wear rings on our hands. Okay. And You've got fingers on your hands. So if you have a loose end, it's very likely that it's gonna scratch the fingers next to you. And at the same time, we use our hands a lot, okay? This is like um, probably the type of jewelry that's gonna get beat up the most, I would think, is a ring because of how often your hands come into contact with other things. Not through fighting, I just mean through like daily life. You kind of tend to bump your hands um, I don't know, into counters or into the door or you're shaking hands with people. It just gets a lot of wear and tear. So that's why it's important that those tail ends, they get wrapped super consistently and super tightly. 
it's not like a necklace. I feel like this area of your body um, is not coming into contact with a whole lot of things. So a necklace can be more fragile. A ring, you really want it to be pretty sturdy. Um, I'll show you an example of another ring here. Uh, similar style of ring, but I want you to notice how the wire wrapping is not as consistent. So instead of looking like a coil, it looks more like, I don't know, it's more like a twist. Um, when you have this twisted wire wrapping, to me, the form of it, the appearance, it's not as nice. I also feel like in terms of function, it's not as comfortable because it almost feels, um, I don't know, it just is not as comfortable because it's not like consistent. So it creates sort of a texture on your skin, um, which I don't prefer. I also think with a ring, symmetry is usually very important. So when you do like this loose twist, uh, it's less symmetrical and with a ring since it's circular you really want a sense of balance that's one of the big things about rings is you know they're circular and I guess with the symbolism of, of a ring um, especially for like marriage or wedding rings is I think golly you know it's supposed to be like it's the circle of life <laughs> you know it's supposed to be continuous because I guess a marriage is continuous I'm trying to think if there's any other things we're going to be using a couple different kinds of wire uh, to make our rings. We use copper and we use brass. Now these are metals that they do tarnish over time. And what that means is um, they're going to change color. They're going to oxidize because as they're exposed to air and moisture, the color of the metal is going to change. Now I find students get really weird about this. <laughs> they hate it. They don't like it at all that it tarnishes. But I think if you can accept it early on and see the beauty in how natural materials react to literally life, um, then you can appreciate it more. There are lots and lots of artists on Etsy and who sell to small galleries and they use the same metals of brass and copper um, and they really lean into the fact that they oxidize and tarnish. It creates almost this like rainbow spectrum of color. Uh, sometimes they turn like bluish greenish, sometimes you get some purple hues. They're just not going to maintain that bright shine forever. Um, but that's okay, man. That's life. I think there's still beauty in things that are not bright and shiny. Now you can polish them right up again and they can have their bright shine, um, but it's something that you're going to be balancing forever. You know what I mean? Because it's always going to react with air. It's always going to react with like moisture and sweat until you start working with precious metals um, like gold and silver and um, like rose gold. Those those don't tarnish, um, but those are very expensive. So that's why we don't use those in class. If we did, oh my gosh, it would, it would take up like the whole sea home art budget, I'm sure of it. <laughs> and then there wouldn't be any clay for Mr. Shang's classes or any paint for uh, Miss Crawford. So. That's why we don't use precious metals to begin with. Uh, I think if you like love jewelry making after taking this class, it's totally worth the investment to get those supplies so that you can have really long lasting pieces that don't tarnish. But I think when you're just learning and making mistakes and figuring out the technique, uh, working with, you know, these more inexpensive metals, I think is the best way to learn. So that's just my two cents on rings for now. Um, I'll show you a couple tutorials later on in the unit and it's gonna be fun. You're gonna like rings. They're, they're very wearable, they're very useful. You're gonna dig it. Okay, I'll talk to you later.